I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the foundation. I don't know what it looks like, but I do think we can make, I think there is a concept of a, of a side chain that is for DAOs. Like oh, not yeah. just, not our DAO, but for DAOs. And the, and we can come up with, with possibilities for their consensus protocols uh, and provide that, that side chain with things that just make building a DAO easier. Because I'm you know, trying to build one, and it's it's not easy. Uh, you could go with a platform, but then it's not flexible. Um, yeah. So those are the two problems with the way it is now. Um, so with some thought and some you know brain power towards it, you can certainly figure out um, a, a a system by which having a DAO chain uh, makes building DAOs for coins, especially attached coins. It, may, it doesn't have to be, but but especially attached blockchains, um, easier. Uh, and then, you know, that would have made, that would make my current life easier if that existed, but it doesn't. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> um, but certainly the proposals, the voting, the funding, the treasury storage, uh, NFTs, whatever, all of that stuff could be inclusive on this particular side chain and be usable by all the DAOs that it supports. And then you don't have... And first of all, and then it becomes way cheaper than doing it on Ethereum. And then I know people are moving to Polygon because it's cheaper there, but it's still just uh, the smart contract methodology. Whereas embedding all this might make it far more liquid, a lot more easier to use quicker and so forth. Um, so I can see a possibility where there's a chain dedicated to this, yeah. facilitating this, and that's a utility chain. And, you know, we would build it for Divi first. Um, and then other people might build it for their coins and other people might attach their chains to it so that they can have DAOs there too. Uh, that'd be cool. Well, that's the interesting cool. part. Right. Yeah. Something that's really interesting with that is that again, as any side chain is its own business case, it become interesting even for, um, you were talking about those platforms where you can, you can build the DAO. Um, mm -hmm. one thing that's important is that whenever we build DAO, like we're going through that with DV. Um, it is often not something for which you have a lot of budget, right? It is often not something where projects actually want to spend a lot of money because there are so many other things to spend money on. Yeah. And so it ends up that uh, everyone tries to build their own little thing uh, everywhere. And mm -hmm. basically, a lot of people need a DAO, but there is no offering besides those platform to to really offer a solution for everybody and an obvious limitation to that was the lack of interoperability between blockchains right yeah it is it was not possible to uh, invest a lot of money and a lot of resource to be able to build the most adaptive DAO platform that would be you know that would serve everybody so instead you have one that tries to do that on polygon and actually a dozen there and then the same on ethereum and and all that the side chain offers the possibility to now have a really like a, a you know a swiss knife to mm -hmm. for DAOs that is not compatible with every different blockchain so it could motivate anyone to spend the proper resource to actually build that um improve that side chain and and we could actually seek partnership for that uh with again like some of the biggest platforms for DAO. maybe they would be interested because i again i believe the side chain is the future of the interaction of on blockchain and it it is for them an interesting business case because it opens completely their user base versus being stuck on on one of those chains yeah, what's the first thing we had to do to make a DAO? I had to make it. We had to make a Ethereum-based Divi coin. I mean, yep. <laughs> like you, that and go that through kind a of, bridge. Yes, right? and a that kind of right. go bridge. through a bridge exactly. Right. So and then you, you got to buy so five hundred. <laughs> yeah, you can't yeah, just yeah, buy so one. now you're voting for a decentralized project, but you have to go through a centralized step. So yes. this is. This is definitely not great, but it's not the case for, for all the projects, but definitely they have to find a tool which is um, on the blockchain that they are on. Service, mm -hmm. like sidechain, do, um, do not force you to do that. They, right. they definitely are compatible with every different blockchain. 
And so, yeah, it is a much right. more interesting solution than what you have now. Yeah, yeah. and sidechains okay. can connect to sidechains. So like you can build a sidechain that does your project. You can have a coin, whatever, that's fine. And then you can connect it to the DAO sidechain. I mean, it, it, it all kind of works nicely like this. It doesn't have to, uh, uh, it doesn't have to be so discombobulated like the entire crypto space is right now. Um, you know, everybody, I think we, we're still suffering from everybody wanting to be the next Bitcoin or the next Ethereum. And instead of saying, let's work with all of this, it's getting better, but it's, that's, I think we're still suffering from that in the, in the entire industry. Like there's new blockchains coming out. Why? And I don't think <laughs> you know? it will go away soon, right? Yeah. I do believe that it is actually the way innovation works, right? Mm -hmm. Like there is the big thing that everybody would want to replace and, and they come with their new approach. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that sidechains bring is that now it's not one and one and one, and you have thousands of isolated blockchains. Right now, it's just a piece of the big picture. Yeah, it's like a map. Chain with this new approach can be connected through a sidechain, and now it's just offering a new approach, and we can see if it survives or not. And it, yep. it really opens opportunity for everyone. While the cost is higher than going through a smart contract, right? It is, um, once you are interconnected, you're not isolated. Like when you start your own layer one and now you have to explain why you're different. Right. Now you can, you can just have this different service and just focus on it. You don't have yeah. to recreate a whole economy because that's not, that's not the purpose. Yeah. And, yeah. and honestly, you say the costs are higher, but you know, these are pretty lightweight nodes. Um, and I think in the, general cost of, of running a project with the marketing with you know with the tech building with the pro with the front end and back end you know development i don't think it's that i don't think running like a, a bunch of nodes is actually that big of the piece of the pie um for a new project i mean it's definitely more than than a smart contract which once it's in doesn't cost anything anymore um That's true. but i don't think it's a huge piece um, of, of a legitimate project. Let's put it that way. Um, no, no, the costs are definitely not prohibitive. It is actually yeah. very cheap, but the thing is yeah. that when you compare to smart contract right. where you basically do three clicks and then, um, but you know, with all the risk yeah. that it actually carries, right. It is, yep. it is the actual problem. So there is a little bit more involved in, um, in starting a sidechain project. Um, However, if you want just a base one and change a few things, we'll have, we'll have models for that, that, that you can reuse and you can very easily start a side chain that would be basically like a duplicate of some other side chains that are very basic. However, if you want to go further, you will need, you will need some specialized developers, a bit like for smart contracts, right? If you mm -hmm. actually want a smart contract that will do exactly what you want, you, you will have to hire developers yourself. Yeah. I mean, some, at some point work has to get done. I mean, no matter that's what. Right. <laughs> so. That's right. That's right. I know, I know it's not, a, it's not believed it's, like that, but. Yeah. Well, crypto made easy is participation. Developer made easy just means that when the time is there, there will be a progression to where the tools are available to yeah. take those same developers. Be, there is a division between smart contract developers I'm I'm going to get in trouble for a second. Smart contract developers are not <laughs> blockchain developers. Let's just right. divide that right there. They will say they're blockchain developers when you're working on a layer one or you're you're spinning up something that's a side chain that's itself a layer one type of side chain. You still need somebody who understands the interactions between a layer one, which is pretty simple. It's pretty clean. It's pretty awesome, and even even tracking certain things is i find it easier than trying to look up things on evms which are accounts based um it's a different different person but i think the goal that is overarching is utility made easy for developers so when we get to that point people will be able to build and hopefully with some templatization um yeah which which 
which I don't know, we can, we can continue the Dow conversation, but I'm going to add this, that I've started working on the, um, the subscriptions tool. <laughs> so I'm just going to, that mm -hmm. needs to be I developer think, made easy. <laughs> it's I think not there's right still, now. there's still some somewhat blockchain developers. Let me explain to you why I say that. Okay. You'll um, be my savior. <laughs> 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 no, but if you look at actually game developers, right? Um, someone who is responsible for animation probably has no idea about how the netcode works, right? And so they're still game developers. So in a way, they are, they're part of the crypto ecosystem. They're definitely not blockchain layer one experts, right? Yeah. But if they develop smart contracts, it's, nowadays it's a big part of crypto. So I would say well, that I think they're, they're still... API developers, right? I mean, that's essentially, we're, we're talking <laughs> about developers. They're scripts yeah, developers. They're script developers. And they do make some complicated smart contracts, right? There's no mm -hmm. question that those contracts, they should be audited, even after they're audited. Let's not even go down that rabbit hole, because even with the ones audited, they've all been <laughs> hacked. Uh, that may yeah. be a hyperbole, but if you, if you look at the numbers Neeks has generated, it's very sad. Um, you know, so... It, it, I've lost my train of thought, but the fact is, is that there's still a difference between a person who's working on a core and building features in a core or maximizing features in the core. What we're, what I hope that we'll have is something in between because we don't need a, a developer. We don't need developers per se embracing the technology that needs to touch a core but they should be something in between that in an easy process where they can be a smart contract developer in an EVM type chain and then transition to. But it should also be easier for the nerdly developer if we templatize things or at least if we give the tutorials that, that, are, that are properly um, cleaned up, uh, identified, documented. It should be easy, especially with the crypto you made easy crypto utility made easy philosophy. I think that's what I'm bridging there. We just need to clarify sometimes when we chat, smart contract <laughs> developers aren't blockchain developers. And to Ooh, bring back, titles. to bring it back to the side chains, right? Like yeah. the side chains will use some smart contract mechanism, Correct. but it's not the way it communicates with the outside, right? So it's very important. Those smart contract will be um, basically fixed. Again, you can have a um, sidechain that will offer you the exact same experience you have on Ethereum. And Correct. we will actually have that. It's just that it's a lot less interesting because it doesn't, it doesn't solve all the issues that the other model solves, right? So that's why we really focus Correct. on the sidechain model that are really dedicated to a service. But really, um, I think I lost. Oh, yeah, no. The, <laughs> the thing that is really interesting is the way... And we were talking about that last time with the data, like blockchain data providing, um, the yeah, the cloud data providing. Yeah. And here it's it's basically the same thing, right? For the DAO, one of the things that um, Rob and actually Voice had to look into is getting something that is collecting data from DV, right? Collecting the the addresses and their balance from DV to see the votes that are active and being able to distribute. Um, the voting NFTs, right? Yes. And so yeah. for that, you have to have a centralized point, right? And a quote unquote Oracle that is reading data on one place and that is throwing the data is in another place so that it is actually informed. With this, the sidechain model, you don't need that anymore. You don't need it Because at all. now the validators are actually also your data providers and Correct. they're part of the consensus. And now you obviate the, necess the necessity to have those centralized oracles, right? Or um, trust minimized oracle systems. Correct. And, and it, is, it is a complete change compared to what you, what you have now as, as an offering, right? So, it's so Web this DAO sidechain is really, would have unique capabilities. It, Web 4.0, it, 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 oh, it brings it back. It. We, <laughs> what'd you say? You're saying Web 4.0. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah I, don't like, say that. Whenever other people do that, I, I, I cringe. I'm like, just I, having fun. I, I've, now seen, I've now seen 5.0. <laughs> I know. There's no, but Web especially that we're, it's we're actually six. the true th the 3.0. It's true 3.0. It's like, 3. It's like, 0. It is the decentralized yeah. one. That's, that's yes. how it works. Yep. Because we've, we've yeah, gone away again. I, I made that 20, 30 minutes ago. I said 
we've done with crypto what AOL was doing. We we yeah. make them some centralized, oracleized, or some they are the gatekeeper essentially. And if and if it's on chain, if it's available to everyone, you don't need AOL. You don't have to go through AOL to then click an icon to go to the internet. Mm-hmm. That was remember, Rob. You're old enough. You might remember. Yep. Neeks was yep. like two when that happened um you, well, you click your aol and uh, look i'm bald look at my beard here you can see it on my avatar i'm really old um you can click that you click your aol icon you've got mail and you waited for it to load and it took forever and you took this link that was this earth link and it would take you to the internet which you had no idea where you're going it's faster today it's easy today. It's still is centralized today. If we make it on chain and it's available immediate to everyone, you don't need oracles anymore. You just get the data directly. You don't need somebody right. to be your authority. It's magic. And that is true web 3.0. <laughs> Maybe that's, right. that's what we should trademark. <laughs> true, web, right. true, true web 3.0 true web 3.0 let me see yeah, if it's an I, available I, domain i i do believe yeah. that it is actually the future of blockchain interoperability so i don't i don't even think we have to trademark it i think it would <laughs> just come naturally that yeah. that this is the actual uh better solution so that that would be a very interesting if somebody uh, owns the domain future coming for you. <laughs> what did you say? somebody owns the domain of course they do <laughs> of course <laughs> Yes. <laughs>